Hi friends, it's Tilly, and we're nearly at the end of our Evil Queen journey. The last piece of the costume is the cape. This was fun to make because it adds a lot of impact without being quite as challenging as the other pieces of the costume. I'm also obsessed with the fabric, and I think it adds a lot of drama to the overall look. Before we get started, as a PSA, I'm going to be hosting some polls on Instagram to get input on the final pieces of the costume. So don't forget to follow to be a part of the process. Which I feel like could go one of two ways. Well, that's how polls work. <laughs> For example, is it worth the extra work to add rhinestones to the hood and gloves, or will it just be too much? Follow to make sure you know when the poll is up and let me know. Now let's get started on the cape. The design of the cape in the Villains World show is a beautiful floral design on a black fabric with a red lining. The cape in the show is also a smaller footprint and more manageable than the cape in the movie, which is good news for us because it means less pattern matching. For those of you who haven't done it, pattern matching is when there is a pattern on a fabric and each piece of the fabric lines up and looks as if it is one continuous pattern. Determining if you'll pattern match or not in the design phase is important because it will dictate how much fabric you need to purchase. For example, this pattern has a vertical pattern repeat of 19.2 inches, and I had to factor that into how many yards of fabric I needed. I couldn't find an exact match for the show fabric, but I found a beautiful velvet fabric with gold foil flowers, so we'll use this as our fashion fabric. I used a red satin for the lining, the same non-shiny set I used for the sleeves, interfacing, and thread. With our materials collected and overall design, I moved on to drafting the pattern. When drafting the pattern, I wanted to minimize the amount of seams to avoid pattern matching. I originally drafted the cape in two pieces, but found the fabric was sitting oddly at the shoulders, which I did not like. As I draped, I looked back at the reference pictures and saw there was a seam towards the front here that I hadn't previously noticed. It's a bit challenging when the image quality varies between my references. This seam allows the fabric to better flow over the shoulders, and I followed where to place that seam based on how the fabric wanted to sit. I then traced it onto craft paper, trued up the pattern, and had the completed half pattern. If you do not want to draft your own pattern, store-bought is fine. I've never used the patterns personally, but I think Simplicity 8721 or 5794 would be good options. Here's what my pattern ended up looking like. It has two back pieces to be stitched together at center back and the two front pieces stitched to add the clasp at the front to better fit around the shoulders. I first cut out the lining in the red satin and overlocked all the pieces. I then cut out the interfacing. I then ironed the seams flat on the lining before ironing that interfacing on, which I did after overlocking and stitching it together again <laughs> because I keep forgetting about it, but you could also put on the interfacing before stitching on the front pieces. For the velvet fabric, I first planned out where I wanted the pattern to be on the cape. This step is important because it can be odd or awkward if the pattern is in a weird spot. I wanted the large flowers to start around these shoulder blades to not get cut off at the top. Once I liked how the flowers were positioned, I cut out one side of the cape first. Another difference in cutting out a large pattern fabric like this is that I cut right side up in order to see the pattern. I usually cut my fabric with the right side down to avoid any pencil markings on the outside of the fabric. With the first side cut out, I then found where it matched on the fabric to make a continuous pattern. When you find where to line it up, make sure there is plenty of space for the second side to be cut out on the fabric. I then carefully pinned on the cut out fabric piece using plenty of pins to line up each foil spot. Next, my pattern piece included seam allowance, so I had to factor that into how the second was going to be cut out. My seam allowance was a quarter of an inch at center back. So to account for that seam allowance, I had to move my pattern piece twice that, 1.5 inches total. This will make sure that when we stitch together, the patterns line up on the seam rather than at the edge of the fabric. Once the second pattern piece is pinned on the fabric, you can then remove the first piece in order to cut. 
With the pieces cut out, I then overlock the fashion fabric before carefully pinning. My strategy for pinning was to perpendicular pin at the foil flowers. Then I parallel pinned further into the piece to reduce the fabric's ability to shift while I sewed. I machine stitched the center back slowly and then the shoulder seams for the velvet and the lining. Since the fabric had some stretch, I had to be careful here. I don't think I've been that nervous or slow at sewing a straight line since I started sewing. Mine isn't perfect, but it's pretty close. If you want to have a bit more control, you can hand stitch first. Then match up the lining to the fashion fabric, right sides together, and stitch together at each side, then the straps and neckline. Next, I cut off the corner seam allowance to reduce bulk, and clipped into the neckline seam allowance curve to have everything lay flat when it was turned right side out. Last, you may have noticed that I have not completed the brooch clasp at the front of her cape. I'm finalizing how I want that to look, so that will be completed in a future final details video. With it right side out, I placed it onto a dress form and admired it. And I'll keep admiring it for the next week. It's placed there for the fabric to sit the same way it'll be worn. The fabric needs to stretch now before it's hemmed. If it stretches after you hem, you'll see the rolling like we had with the Sylvie cape because the lining stretched less than the outside fabric. I've seen folks recommend anywhere from 24 hours to two weeks of settling before hemming. My shoes arrive this week, and once they do, I can work on hemming the dress, finalizing all the fastenings, including the snaps and hooks for the cape. And I'm going to try to wait as close to the two weeks of hang time as possible, but it'll largely depend on when the photo shoot's going to happen. So subscribe to see how everything turns out. In the meantime, you can watch the first four parts of Making My Evil Queen cosplay on YouTube now. I will link the playlist down below and follow my socials for the polls and see the fun updates, behind the scenes, and photos. See you next time.